live with the community. This is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Development bi-weekly call. Today is February 16th. We are halfway through February. Where is the time going? But we are so excited to be together today. Let's discuss our agenda. So we've got tons of updates. Latest updates on the community, pnp.net libraries, pnp PowerShell, Yo Teams, Microsoft Teams Toolkit, Graph Toolkit, independent publisher connectors. We got it all. Talking about samples, script samples, Microsoft Teams samples, Power Platform samples, all the samples. As Todd would say, a plethora of samples. It means a lot to all of us. And then we're going to see picture time with together mode. Then we're going to get to our amazing all-star presenters of the day. Raman's going to cover build Microsoft Teams tabs with adaptive cards. And Federico is going to cover creating an internal CD with list formatting. So we've got the boom to drop today. We are very, very excited. But let's talk a little bit about what is available to you in this community. There is so much. We've got Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community videos. You can subscribe today, as the slide just told you. We've also got our LinkedIn group for discussions. Join today. You've got open source initiatives. We've got sample galleries for the entire community. That includes team samples, SPFX samples, for web parts and extensions, Power Platform samples, list formatting samples. The samples go on and on, and we want you to use them. But you don't need to remember all those links. There are so many links. Only one, aka.ms slash community slash home is going to give you access to all of these things. And you follow us on Twitter for updates at M365PNP or LinkedIn, and you'll be alerted to all the great stuff. So don't hesitate to do all those things. Now, you may be thinking, I like this call. I like the presenters on this call. I'd love to actually present on this call. Well, we got gotcha. you. We want you to present a cool demo, a feature, a solution, anything that you feel has value to the community. Don't overthink it. Doesn't have to be a flux capacitor that makes time travel possible. It can absolutely be something that you found useful and you want to share with the community. We enjoy and welcome everyone to present a demo. Even if you've never done it, we'll help you out. So all you need to do is fill out the form, aka.ms slash community slash request slash demo, and we will connect with you and get you scheduled. Again, don't overthink it, everybody. We would love to even co-present with you if you've never done it before. So just reach out to us, let us know, and we absolutely want to, uh, to work with you on everything, okay? Now, you may say, what other community calls are available? Well, we've got lots of those too. Uh, we've got the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform weekly call. Now, this is with Microsoft speakers. That's what makes it unique and special is that you're going to get directly from the mothership, the horse's mouth, if you will. The other horse, not that Chris Kent guy. Pfft. We like him, but not from Microsoft, right? So the Microsoft presenters, they are going to give you everything that you want to know from within the mothership. So definitely get that on your calendar. Then there's the Power Platform monthly call. That happened yesterday. That's the third Wednesday of every month. We've got the Microsoft Identity Platform. We've got Office add-ins. We've got the bi-weekly calls. So that's the one you're on now, Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community Development. And then Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework, those are sibling calls. They uh, are opposite each other on Thursdays, but you can get access to all of them by going to aka.ms slash community slash calls. And they're also published on Meetup. So if you want to learn more about that, go to aka.ms slash community slash meetup. Now, speaking of that Microsoft speakers call, next week, 21st of February, we're going to see Dan Walleen talking about integrating Azure Communication Services calling into a React app. We're all going to react great to that, aren't we? Then Gary is going to cover Teams Toolkit, Learn Path, Build a Bot Using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So you can get access to that by going to the URL, aka.ms, slash community, slash ms dash speakers dash call dash invite just rolls off the tongue right all you have to do is click the link in the chat we're got we got you okay now all these things may feel a little overwhelming and you may think i want to get involved but i don't know how well sharing is caring is here to take care of you now this is a program that we have started that provides hands-on guidance what does that mean means we're going to join calls with you live in a safe space, which means they're not recorded, and answer and, and work together with you on a variety of topics. Things like, did you know you can edit Microsoft documentation and help keep it updated and curated, and you'd even get credit for doing a sample there and, and contributing? Or you may have a sample you want to share, or you may have a sample that you want to share and then show it off on a call. All these things we cover. In fact, next week, we've got the Power Platform Samples Contributor Sharing is Caring session on February 23rd. So don't hesitate to sign up. These are absolutely free. There is no cost, and you're able to learn and meet with other members that are passionate and like-minded just like you are. So don't hesitate to go sign up, and we hope to see you there. Now, once you do contribute, we want to recognize you for all the amazing work that you're doing. And that's where our community recognition program comes in. This is powered by Credly. 
yeah, that same credly you're thinking that gives you those certification badges. With these badges given to you by the community at no cost will showcase your contributions. And we understand that we're all working in environments where we need to show that we're making a difference, whether that's to our manager, to our clients, or both. This is our way of giving back to you in a formal and official accredited way. There is no cost. We just need you to opt in, ak.ms slash community slash recognition. And we've got even more badges. We're getting ready to drop the SPFX web parts, team samples, and extension badges this weekend. So be on the lookout for that, everybody. We're excited for those, along with all the new ones that came out, list formatting, PNP PowerShell, CLI for Microsoft 365, and adaptive card extensions. They're out there. You're going to get them, and we're excited for that. Now, there's an upcoming event coming up in March, the Microsoft Graph and .NET Hack Together. Uh, we are super excited for this. Uh, it is coming up in March, and it is available for you to, uh, to connect and work with. So you can go to aka.ms hack together uh, to learn more about that. And guess what? <laughs> There's going to be prizes and maybe a badge. So definitely go check that out. Learn a little bit more about it so that you can get involved and be ready for it. AK.ms slash hack dash together. All right, everybody. Let's get into some project specific updates. So we're going to start with PNP.net libraries with Bert. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, what's happened on the .NET side uh, for PNP framework for that library? Uh, we had a couple of small fixes from uh, Miguel Martinez and from Jerome Bolliet. Uh, and then a, a slightly bigger update around uh, how we handle graph and, and uh, authentication URLs. So uh, we're still on, on a path to uh, fully support any cloud environment and then uh, any hard code reference to graph.max.com, for example, that will break in some other clouds. So uh, that work is done, more to come, uh, mainly integrating uh, settings from core SDK with framework so that you have a, a nice interrupt uh, between both, but work in progress there. On the core SDK side, um, Matthijs did uh, work on the permission, so we have an option to uh, uh, share a file. Uh, now you can also uh, update the sharing link, uh, so you can uh, add a user, share it with, the, with an additional user, or remove a user from the sharing link. Uh, Dimitri and uh, Armatia, if I pronounced it correctly, did documentation updates, so thanks for that. Uh, Patrick Lambert has been working on testability, so he's using uh, Mock as a test framework, and we did some changes to support uh, kind of fully mocking uh, your developments using PHP Core SDK. So that's really cool. And finally, some other smaller updates like uh, a new digest uh, news digest page support type. So uh, when you uh, create such a page, uh, we know uh, handle that correctly. We don't fail anymore. Important to know, actually it applies to both framework and course decay, is we drop .NET 5 from our nightly builds. So .NET 5 has been, uh, has been out of support for a while already, and the next major version will not have it anymore. Uh, so we already started dropping it from the nightly builds. And a few other smaller fixes here and there. Um, and usage is steady, around 43 billion requests a month. Uh, number of tenants went up, so we are at 134,000 tenants uh, in January, that used the .NET uh, library, so that's uh, pretty good. But uh, moving now to PowerShell, Kotam, up to you. Thanks, 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 Bert. Um, over in the PNP PowerShell library, uh, we added a um, bunch of uh, improvements to the existing commandlet. So uh, one of the major things that we added was support for uh, removal of the large lists. So what I used to happen is when you have a large list, like say 100,000, 200,000 list items, and you try to send that re that list to the recycle bin, it used to be a not so good experience. So we added a better experience to move sub move the list to the recycle bin. So it it starts a bit, it starts a job, and then once you know that it has been done, you you'll know the status of that job. And so we added that support. Uh, besides that, uh, the new Viva connections support is rolling out in the Microsoft uh, tenants. So we also added support for that using in the set PNP home site, as well as we also try to retrieve the support from for that in the get PNP home site commandlets. Um, another improvement we did was in the pnp sp rest method and the graph method so both are both of these method uh, both of these commandlets you can use to make uh, http request against the sharepoint as well as the graph endpoint so uh, we improved that to handle complex json payloads uh, besides that uh, what bert mentioned um, yeah powershell 5 support has been dropped so going forward in the newer 2.x versions we will be only supporting powershell 7.2 or later versions of the powershell that are going to be there so the nightly command 
monthly nightly bills are, are have already dropped the support for that so we would highly encourage you to uh, you know uh, use the nightly bills and test out your existing scripts and let us know if you if you have any issues with the, uh, those uh, common lets in the newer builds um besides that would absolutely love to hear from you on the discussion forum as well as in the issues list on the github um usage has been also quite increasing uh, uh, yeah it has been 37 billion requests a month that's a monthly figure wow and also uh, around the usage in around 35000 tenants so yep quite good numbers overall uh, over to you david thanks a lot woo 37 billion awesome thank you gatum all right let's go over to yo teams with rick hey hey, hey. uh so yeah our usage has been uh, up as well um up uh, until 49000 downloads uh, what have we working on? We've been doing some uh, documentation updates, of course. There's always need for good documentation. So uh, also in this community, if somebody wants to help or, uh, improve the documentation, if you don't want to do it, just create an issue if something's wrong. If you want to do it and help out, even better. But we need to get our documentation up in order because uh, it's some things we made a little bit too complex. We admit that now. So <laughs> we have to make some things back to a simpler version so that uh, yeah, everybody can see what's going on. Um, we also have a preview since last time, which we updated, and we'll need do an, uh, I think a new preview release as well soon, um, because it's just small changes, so that can uh, be joined in the, the last preview release. And then what's next? Uh, once this preview, the new preview release will be tested, we'll do a new stable release version, and we're working, still working on the Visual Studio Code extension and support for single sign-on and stuff like that. Um, our videos, we're still uh, thinking about ideas to produce them. So if somebody wants to help us, I think um, they're always welcome to help. Um, if you want more information, yeah, just go to the L, aka.ms slash yo teams and get started with building Teams applications. And that's it. Over to you, John. Yeah, John is coming in, but hold on, everybody. We got an incoming data stream. Oh, what, what is that? That's Microsoft Teams Toolkit. John? Thanks for the sound effects, David. <laughs> got it. Uh, yeah, so little update on the Teams Toolkit. Uh, we have new version release. It's just a point release, so that's 4.2.2 for the VS Code extension. And that just brings in um, a little bit of the latest and greatest for Node 18 support, which has been um, requested and uh, was painful before. So happy to announce we, we at least support the latest of, of that. Same with React. Um, some latest updates for the bot framework stuff that we that we built on top of. So we'll use Cloud Adapter now. Um, which if you're not familiar with that, just uh, latest and greatest there is avoid some issues and updates to Teams.js dependencies and some minor bug fixes. So you can check out the change log um, on the GitHub page uh, to figure out all the uh, nitty gritty on that. Um, one thing I wanted to highlight is uh, the opportunity we have. Um, I've been talking about it a couple weeks now in this call. Um, we have a major release coming up. Tomorrow is the plan for the pre-release of that. Um, which will be uh, for the VS Code extension. So you can be able to install it using the pre-release functionality on VS Code. Um, but if you would like to participate in a paid research study on those features, please uh, reach out. The, the couple questions on the form, really just to make sure that you have previous experience building Teams apps and that um, it'll be useful for your time and ours. And um, and then we'll compensate you for that time as well. And that just helps us build better products. So uh, click that if you want to participate in that or just ping me and I'm happy to chat more about it. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, all right, let's go to MGT. I don't think Seb is on the call, so I will cover this. Uh, we got 2.9.0 out as our latest release. Uh, we've seen a lot of activity with what's coming next in MGT with Gavin and Seb on those Tuesday Microsoft only calls. So definitely tune in. I think we're going to see more of them there. Of course, you can always, always, always help out. Want to uh, get your assistance in improving features and building and help wanted good first issues. Uh, you can see that at aka.ms slash MGT slash issues. Now, let's go over to Independent Publisher Connectors with Joss. Hello, everyone. As always, we have tons of updates in the world of connectors. Since the last time we spoke two weeks ago, we have grown by more than one connector a day. We are 15 connectors greater. We are now at 948 across the overall ecosystem, spanning Power Automate, Power Apps, and Azure Logic Apps. We are now at 239 independent publisher connectors, 10 more since the last time we spoke, which means there are more community connectors than there are made by Microsoft. That is so incredible. It really shows the strength of the contributions in the community and how much you all contribute. I would like to thank Troy, as always, for his four new connectors and Rel Hugging Face Lexica Dice Bear, as well as Lucas for IBM Watson Text-to-Speech and IBM Assistant. Zachariah for WhatsApp. This is super exciting. We have been 
asked for a WhatsApp connector for so long, and it's made by independent publishers. Ostasi for Crozu PM, Clement for Meaning Cloud, and Nova GL for Koopa. I would also love to call out um, the fact that we have an open AI connector, which was just updated with support for Dolly 2 by Robin. Thank you so much for your support on that, Robin. If you all love connectors, which I mean, I love connectors, that inherently means you have to love Power Platform, because what is Power Platform without connectors? Next weekend, I believe on Friday and Saturday, there is the Global Power Platform Bootcamp taking place in many, many dozens of cities around the world. I will, I will be presenting live at the Times Square event on Friday. So if you guys are looking to sign up for that or for one near you, please visit powerplatformbootcamp.com. Thank you as always, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, Josh. You might even say the connectors are what connects the Power Platform. If you don't say. <laughs> and I see Todd probably shaking his head there. All right, let's move on to script samples with Paul Bullock. Thank you. So script samples is a place where you can share your scripts with the community. So these are PowerShell scripts. So this could be Microsoft Graph SDK PowerShell scripts, PMP PowerShell, CLI for M365 and more. And these samples do get integrated into this, uh, the Microsoft Sample Solution Gallery. Are just super super cool so they're in, in in a few places there so we have a new set of awesome scripts so we've got uh, bulk import data from multiple files and multiple lists from reshmi akalu which is uh, super cool that's in pmp powershell we've got pinpoint items and documents that haven't been indexed yet after an update so search related by casper larson and we've got some new uh, general general PowerShell scripts, actually, uh, which is a bulk send a CSV file, but using the graph uh, API by Siddharth, uh, which is super, super cool. Um, we've also done some small visual updates to the site just to make it a little bit clearer and also links back to the solution sample gallery. So if you do navigate here and you want to, to get back, uh, for example, if you did arrive from that experience, then you can, you can see what else and other samples that are available to you uh, if you're looking for that. Um, I've also updated the contribution guidance as well. Um, so again, it, open to feedback on those. If it's not helpful or you need more information, then absolutely uh, reach out to me and make those tweaks. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you can DM me um, via Twitter or, or, or LinkedIn, uh, so whatever you prefer. And we do have some samples on the, on the repo if you've got some ideas or you want to contribute to as well. Um, so, but thank you, thank you for all for your samples or contributions. You're absolutely awesome. But remember, there is a badge as well for you uh, if you do uh, contribute. But remember to opt in. It is an opt in thing. But uh, but absolutely, we'll be releasing badges uh, hopefully soon uh, on that. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Did someone say badges? Woof. Yeah, my head just turned. Badges. Yes. All right. Let's talk about Microsoft Team samples with Bob German. Hey everybody, thanks David, how are you everyone? We have a great new sample this week. This is from the inimitable, the inimitable Marcus Muller, um, and who has made so many great samples for us. And this one is a document generation app. So you can go in in a tab in Teams and you can see the picture and actually fill in some information. It will generate an offer document and then there's message extensions that help with the review of that document. It shows how to generate documents using uh, injection of metadata into a template document, how to use Teams SSO uh, to call the SharePoint API. And um, also, of course, it, it shows how to you put all this together into a Teams application so that users can use it not only in Teams, but also in Outlook and Office.com. So thanks so much to Marcus, and please contribute your favorite Teams samples at aka.ms slash m365 slash samples. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. And yeah, Marcus is one of the best. So thank you, Marcus. All right. So true. Let's turn it over to April for Power Platform samples. Thank you, David. We have three amazing Power Apps samples to share here. We have an app login sample from Seth that shows a good pattern for if you need to have some kind of authentication screen in your Power Apps applications and how you would accomplish that. We have a search movie samples by Ariana that shows how you can do a custom connector that connects to the OMDB um, service there and how you can integrate with that to pull and search different movies. And then we have a student application process application from Samia 
that shows how you can kind of walk through that student application process, all Canvas applications there that we have that you can take advantage of and look at there. Uh, also, if you want to get started uh, sharing your Power Platform solutions that you built, you built something cool and you want to share it with the community, but you're not sure how to get started, we have a Power Platform contributor sharing his caring session on February 23rd uh, next week there that will walk you through start to finish. David does an amazing job with these sessions there, walking you through how to do your first pull request and get your submissions there into that repo. And if you want to share your submission there, go to aka.ms forward slash power platform dash samples. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, April. All right. It's about that time. Picture time, everybody. So let's crack open those cameras. Vesa will take over and he will show us hopefully real faces, not blurry faces that we had yesterday from Teams. Hey, look at that. Real faces. Awesome. And I think that's a might be muted. Here we go. Now I'm unmuted. There we go. Winning. Technology is hard. Let's wait a few more seconds. Uh, we are still, I think we still have a few seats. Uh, we are already recording, but let's wait a while. Let's wait a few more seconds. Do we have more people joining in? I guess we are hitting the limit over there. Let's do some hand waving, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, once again, awesome to have you in a call. Cool to see so many familiar faces and and Todd behave. Uh, <laughs> excellent. I saw what you were doing on the on the back row. Excellent. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining. Brilliant to have you on a call. Awesome. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Vesa. All right, everybody. It is all star time of the day, and so let's give our attention to Raman on the topic: build Microsoft Teams tabs with adaptive cards. Feel free to take on over. Okay, uh, let me show my screen. Looks great, got it. Uh, perfect, uh, I'm excited to talk to you today about building tabs with adaptive cards. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Search API uh, to search through different resources and display them in an adaptive card tab within Microsoft Teams. Uh, just a little bit about me. My name is Ramin Ahmadi. I work at Content Cloud based in London. I've been a software developer for a really long time since SharePoint 2003 came out. And I've never stopped learning and trying new things. You can follow me on social media with the links you can see um, here. Uh, now let's focus on adaptive card tabs. Uh, as we know, tabs are just web pages embedded in Microsoft Teams. Uh, they are simple HTML iframe tags that point to domains defined in the app manifest and can be added as part of a channel inside the team, group chat, or personal app for individual users. So there are a couple of ways for developing uh, Microsoft Teams tabs, uh, and, and you can have different tools and frameworks such as uh, SharePoint framework, uh, you can use Yeoman Generator for Teams or uh, Teams Toolkit and you know you can use your favorite uh, library or uh, framework uh, like uh, React, Angular, .NET or anything allowing you to create a web page. But you know there are some considerations using these uh, traditional methods to build tabs. Um, sometimes the tab doesn't look and feel native to the rest of the teams. Uh, also, some apps uh, aren't responsive, therefore they won't work easily on mobile. Um, slow load times is another problem. Sometimes it's because of the fact that it's embedded in an iframe, uh, but that can also open up a host of other constraints depending on how uh, the web page is built. And also, there are some uh, hidden maintenance uh, and costs that you need to be aware of. But building tabs with adaptive cards, on, on other hand, uh, would allow you to build your app uh, with ready-made UI building blocks, as simple as uh, drag and drop and edit UI elements in real time uh, that look and feel uh, native on mobile, desktop, and web. Uh, also, you can use a bot uh, as the backend, and that bot is responsible for uh, accepting requests as, and responding, uh, sending those adaptive cards back to the tab and render them. And of course, you can use uh, task module because this is really uh, important if you want to collect some information from the user. So this is a really good way to uh, collect those information. Uh, there are some prerequisites that you need to be aware of. You uh, need to be familiar with bot development because this is your backend and also adaptive cards and task module in Microsoft Teams. Uh, 
you have to register bot as i mentioned this is your backend and you have to register bot in azure and if needed this is optional uh, if you need to use a single sign-on for example if you want to use a service like a microsoft graph api you have to um, uh, uh, configure single sign-on uh, that i will show you in a minute in the demo also, there are some limitations. Uh, so at the moment, the page load size is limited to 80 kilobytes. So if you have an adaptive card more than 80 kilobytes, uh, it's not going to render. So if you have a complex, app, complex application or web app, uh, this is not a good approach uh, for you to use adaptive cards tabs. Um, and also there are some limitations uh, around the adaptive card features. Not all of the features are available. For example, uh, action.execute or some of the other uh, adaptive card features, uh, uh, you basically cannot uh, get them uh, at the moment. Uh, but you know, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Teams and adaptive card team are heavily investing in their future. And there are so many exciting features are coming to the adaptive card world, such as form validation, people pick care, or fellow menu and so on. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you uh, one of these feature, which is the people picker in the demo. Uh, and also there is no advanced layout controls. So at the moment, all of these cards sent to the tab uh, are rendered uh, vertically. So if you want uh, to have you know, multi-column layout, it's not possible at the moment, but I'm sure uh, the, there will be in the future. And also only personal tabs are supported. Um, so when you build a bot, you are able to power a number of Teams capabilities, such as bots, uh, messaging extensions. You can show dialogues known as task modules. Uh, and now you have the tabs. Uh, this is all powered by a bot as backend and adaptive card as front. Uh, before this, you had to spin up a, a separate web server uh, to host your app, and you had to build the front end using a, a usual set of web tools. Uh, so with a single bot backend and adaptive card, you can power everything in Teams. And this is the unified developer experience the, that adaptive card based tabs aims uh, to solve. Um, so there are some changes to the app manifest. Uh, adaptive card tabs are rendered when the content bot ID property is provided in the static tab definition. Uh, but you need to be aware of that. This is only available from uh, manifest version 1.9 or later. And you can use either a content bot, bot ID, which is a specifying the adaptive card tab, or a content URL, uh, which is specifying a typical hosted web content tab experience. You cannot have both at the same time. So here uh, we say instead of rendering a URL, send a message to this bot over here, and that bot take, takes care of everything and send back the uh, the, the adaptive cards to to get rendered. Uh, and if you if you wonder how it works, uh, so when you open a, a, a Microsoft Teams a tab with adaptive cards, um, it will send uh, an invoke request to your bot. Uh, so this is uh, the payload of that request. It's a tab fetch request that is uh, get, it gets sent to the bot with a bunch of information, uh, such as the tab context, conversation, some uh, information about the user. Uh, and the bot receives uh, the request and in return, it sends back a bunch of adaptive cards, and those adaptive cards uh, get rendered vertically uh, in, in your tab. Uh, so this is how it works. I will explain more in the demo. Uh, so let's go to the uh, demo, jump into the demo. Uh, but before I jump into the demo, uh, as I mentioned in the prerequisite section, uh, you need to uh, set up a bot in Azure. So I need to uh, spend a few seconds talking about the configuration. Uh, as you can see here, I'm running this bot uh, on a web app hosted in Azure. But uh, because for this demo, I wanted to use Microsoft Graph, I configured a single sign-on single sign -on by registering an app here. Uh, so this is the app. I added some uh, permissions because I want to search through some resources uh, such as files, uh, events, messages, or some uh, SharePoint list items. So that uh, I needed some of uh, this info, uh, some of these permissions permissions that you can see here uh, and there are some other steps that you need to take to uh, set up this uh, single sign-on so this is really a uh, uh, good documentation you can follow uh, this is a really a step-by-step -step, um, you know guide that can help you uh, configure the single sign-on for your bot i will share all of these links with you after this demo 
so back to this. Um, so this is the uh, application registration. Also, we need a, a single sign-on connection. Uh, so here we have a bunch of service providers that you can use, but for this demo, because I wanted to use Microsoft Graph, I use uh, Azure AD uh, V2, so I just set client ID secret, uh, you know, token exchange URL and the other uh, properties needed, the scopes that I need for uh, my application. So this is the configuration and everything behind the scene. Uh, so if we go to Microsoft Teams, uh, here I have the app running, and this is how it looks like when you first go to the tab. Uh, but before I select the sign in button, I want to show you something. I'm going to open the developer tools uh, panel uh, and in the network panel. Uh, if I just refresh this tab, Uh, you can see it just send uh, an invoke request uh, to your bot. So this is the, this is some information about um, you know the context about the tab about the current user and everything. Uh, and in response, the bot is sending back back this object which is type of us. So uh, it, it provides you a, a, a signing link so you can use to sign into the app. Uh, so if I now select this button. I can just sign in and it returns to the tab and you can see it sends another uh, invoke request to your bot um, and bot in response we send uh, a bunch of adaptive cards. Uh, for this sample, uh, it, it's just three adaptive cards. Uh, so the first one is uh, this one at the top, uh, which displays um, uh, some information about the current user, uh, the image, the, the sign out button. This one, uh, you can uh, search through uh, different resources in Microsoft 365 uh, through this uh, uh, drop down control. Um, so here, for this is a, a button that if you click, uh, it just invoke a task module. Uh, which I said this is a, just a, a dialogue uh, and if you see in the developer uh, panel in the network panel uh, it's a, it basically it's a request uh, of type uh, task fetch so if I go to the payload you can see uh, here this is a task fetch it's, it's sent it to uh, a bot and bot will uh, return this adaptive card task module and uh, user can interact with this and submit and if we just you know send another request to the bot and here we see some of the results so if I just close this and if I just search for something like concern if I just uh, say okay go through all of the files and select search uh, this uh, sends another request of type uh, tab submit with some data. Uh, so the data here is the, the resource type and also the keyword that I just uh, put here. Uh, and uh, the bot use Microsoft Graph API uh, to search through all of the files and find everything contains uh, this keyword. And you can see the results here. And also I can filter it here. So this is a paper picker I was talking about. It's one of the features you get uh, from the adaptive card without needing, you know, uh, using any library or uh, framework. And if I select this and just press submit, you can see just filter everything. And these are the files created by Helen. Uh, also, I can search uh, different uh, resources, uh, and the good thing about adaptive card is, uh, so you see each time I send this request, it, it returns a, a different adaptive card with different UI, uh, with different icon, different set of properties. So if I just uh, search another thing uh, to search the messages. Uh, you see different uh, UI with different properties. And this is really easy to create. So you can use Adaptive Card Designer, as you can see here. I use this for uh, building this UI elements. And you, after that, you get this JSON file and you can use it for uh, sending back to the tab to get rendered uh, uh, here in Microsoft Teams. So uh, this is it. This is, the, uh, this is how it works. And after you're done, you can uh, sign out using this button. It will send another request to your bot and you will get sign out. And if you refresh the tab, you are back to the signing page. Uh, so let's just talk, talk a little bit about the code. 
so this is this is the code, uh, and this is your uh, bot class. Uh, so here we have different uh, type of invoke. Uh, so we have tap fetch and tap submit, which are new before the adaptive card tabs. We didn't have this invoke request uh, before. It was just you know task fetch and task uh, submit, which is uh, for task modules. Uh, and now we have tap fetch and tap submit. So the first request we get from the bot is tap fetch, and here we just we can check the token response and uh, if we uh, configure the single sign on, and if the token response is not available, you can send back an adaptive card with a signing link asking a user to sign in. Otherwise, you can uh, render the card and uh, the cards and just send another um, uh, uh, response to to your tab. So here, uh, I'm just uh, returning three uh, adaptive cards, and as as I said, it just they, they, they rendered vertically. Uh, so th these are the three cards. Um, and also we have the adaptive cards here uh, under resources. There are a bunch of JSON files. So, that, so for example, this is a, a this is the one I use for the filter uh, filters task module, and this is how uh, I use uh, the people picker. So this is really easy. As you can see here, you can just uh, say, okay, I want this um, control to render the users, and the user can search through um, uh, the available users in your tenant. Also, for different uh, resources, I have different UIs. So this is for drive item or the files or for events. I use uh, different, you know, icon, different properties. And uh, under the services, we have different services. But this is the one uh, I want to talk about. This is uh, the graph service API. So when we get the token, uh, this method just, you know, set the token and it's going to um, um, basically makes this graph client uh, available so we can use that. Uh, and this is the one that get the user profile photo. And there's, this is the one I want to talk about because this is a, uh, the, this is the API that we use for search through different sources. So uh, if I uh, go back to here, this is uh, a really good documentation about Microsoft Search API. Uh, with Microsoft Search API, you can uh, search different resources such as messages, events, people, um, uh, OneDrive, and SharePoint. And even you can just com combine uh, some of these resources together and search, for example, all of the OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, messages, everything, and just return the results, um, which is really, really useful. Uh, so this is how I get the uh, results and uh, send it back to the tab. I think this is the main key. Uh, that This is the key uh, features of this uh, bot. Uh, so I think that's it from, from my side. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can. And this is the useful links that you, you can see uh, and just use them if you want to learn more about adaptive cards or single sign on or Microsoft Search and adaptive card designer. Uh, I'll put it here. Uh, thank you. Over back to you, David. Awesome. Very, very cool stuff, uh, Roman. Really appreciate you sharing that. Put the links in the chat. Uh, some sure. questions there for you, I think, as well. And uh, really appreciate you showing the behind the scenes, right? Not just that how things work from the code perspective and how it looks in the browser, but really how we understand it's working under uh, behind the scenes there backstage, so to speak, in the code. So really nice work. All right. Let's Thank move you. over to creating an internal CD with list formatting with Federico. So Federico, if you want to take Hello, over. David. Hello, David. I'm here. And uh, now I share my screen. Just a moment. Okay, in presentation mode. Okay, I think uh, it's possible. Yes. Yep. Looks great. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Take it away. I'll uh, introduce myself. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Federico Sapia, and I work uh, as a digital workplace uh, specialist in a public sector company. Let's build uh, an internal CV with Microsoft List. Uh, today, I would like to talk about a new solution I created uh, using uh, the new Microsoft List uh, application. This solution will uh, allow us to uncover the most advanced features uh, of Microsoft uh, List uh, to track and organize information about people in uh, organization through an internal CV template. First, uh, 
I want to say um, I want to say that even though you can take it uh, as an, ex an example and customize it uh, based on your needs, this is not necessarily a solution for a real world production, but uh, a demo of some advanced Microsoft list capabilities and how they can be put together to help users work better and in less time. And uh, when it comes to users, uh, Microsoft List uh, is not uh, just about tracking stuff like products, uh, activities, uh, and so on, but uh, it could be also focused uh, on people. Therefore, this uh, solution is meant uh, to provide HR managers and specialists with uh, an example of how it's possible to gather information about uh, employees and their work history or a career path, along uh, with uh, other Microsoft uh, 365 solutions. These solutions could be obviously third-party apps or platform as well, but the internal CV template I'm going to share today took inspiration from Microsoft Dell, since it shares part of the same information structure. In other words, we can let other people know more about us, what we are good at, and what we are working on right now. And similarly to Dell, we are able to add projects skills and education history to our profile to help others find us when they, they are looking for people with a certain expertise. Furthermore, additional info are available since Microsoft, Microsoft List Sample uh, provides a point of access to both the standard Microsoft TC5 organizational card and a link to our Yammer profile where knowledge is shared with followers and within communities. But uh, to achieve this uh, result, uh, we need a proper user interface, uh, and uh, here comes the logic uh, used to build this uh, Microsoft List uh, template. We can display different types of uh, information on a card, but uh, what if we used uh, this card if, uh, if it was a mix between a digital paper and a social profile? Well, the result that we can see in this preview is a large custom card of a gallery view, which allows users to fill out a form composed of multiple sections, as well as further customization option will allow to add a background image and a header too. So the main question are the following. How far can we take a Microsoft List card? What are the features and capabilities that we could implement to make a large card work uh, as a, an internal uh, curriculum vitae. What are the advantages for user as well as HR and people management processes? Well, here is the good news, uh, because uh, everything uh, we can see here and uh, in a real-time demo soon is fully supported by Microsoft List JSON. In other words, no workarounds, no glitches uh, or tricks uh, to get things done, but some advanced and fully documented features we can find listed here. So as mentioned before, the result is a, an example of how you can put many advanced features together in a tool to deal with one of the great challenges in our organization, that is uh, getting people to fill out more about themselves uh, than Azure Active Directory knows. And uh, one of these uh, advanced features I would like to highlight today uh, is the usage of the line edit field JSON property. According to Microsoft Official Docs, thanks to the uh, inline editing, we can load field editors to edit field data on an item in a standard list view layout. However, in this example, the inline editing feature is widely used in a gallery view layout to allow users to edit uh, an internal CV without the need uh, for opening the standard right pane and thus making the filling process quicker and easier. Except for the custom images and the attachments, all the editing boxes are visually embedded and ready for use in a card. And among the features I've mentioned, I would like to share a deeper look at the automation of an internal CV attachments. This is an implementation that tries to get the most out of the list attachments to display them as a clickable tiles. And this is possible thanks to a dedicated Power Automate flow and the new JSON split operator recently added by Microsoft for custom formatting in Microsoft List. In other words, each user can upload the attachments through the advanced editing right pane 
while a power, a power automated flow and the split operator will execute all the required tasks to let other people view these attachments by clicking on corresponding tiles displayed in the works portfolio section. And now, all the steps required uh, to create this automation service, as well as the JSON code, are uh, illustrated in a step-by-step -step tutorial available in the sample solution gallery of uh, Microsoft Adoption Portal. And uh, in addition to this, uh, you can learn more about JSON formatting thanks to Microsoft Learn official docs. So this is the end of my uh, presentation, but uh, I would like to share a real-time demo from my screen, so to play the role of uh, an end user, and uh, here is uh, what uh, we get. Uh, everything is uh, empty now, but if we, we uh, create a new item and just save it, uh, here is what we can see. We have uh, an empty CV card we can further customize by adding, uh, for example, a uh, um, cover image. We click on Edit All. Let's add a new image here. Let's choose, uh, for example, this one here. Okay. We can uh, also add a background uh, image. Let's choose uh, another one, for example, this one here. Okay. And uh, here we go. You can save this card, and uh, everything now is updated with uh, these uh, custom images. But uh, as uh, I said, uh, we can use the line editing uh, in place. Uh, in this card, so we can start uh, writing more about us. I have uh, a text, standard text, uh, Lauren Mipson. So if I put this text here, it is that uh, this uh, CV card will expand. So the more we write, the more it will expand. And uh, we can also add more uh, uh, information, for example, about projects through a drop down menu. We can uh, populate here, we can write any text that we want, we can add more entries and so on. And also this section with drop down will expand up to a certain limit of pixel. If this limit is exceeded, um, a pop-up, um, a custom overcard will uh, show us a complete overview of uh, all the information we, uh, we added here. Uh, the same thing is uh, for uh, the other section that uh, reproduces uh, the structure of a Microsoft Dev application. As uh, I said, we have a works portfolio and a people picker to show the people we are collaborating with, uh, for example, uh, our current project. And with uh, regard to this uh, work, works uh, portfolio section, uh, I would like to show you what's the magic, because uh, uh, there is uh, a power automate flow behind this uh, and ready to be triggered. So if we put uh, the attachment, uh, for example, I can add uh, some attachment uh, here from my desktop. I can add uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one here. OK, everything is uh, saved. And uh, a power automate flow within uh, some second uh, basically will uh, we'll write some information um, in a specific field and the JSON split operator will do the magic by showing all the, the attachment information through clickable tiles. I will try to do a refresh, let's see. And here we go, we have uh, our attachments as clickable tiles. In fact, if I click on here, we have uh, our portfolio completely available to other users. So as we can see, this is a basic uh, example, uh, and uh, the JSON code is uh, available in uh, the adoption uh, portal. Uh, we have also other button uh, with a specific command, uh, for example, uh, share button, so that uh, other people can share our professional profile. Uh, and we have also a um, button that points to our Yammer or Viva Engage uh, profile uh, to get more information about us uh, and uh, our expertise. So basically, this is uh, everything uh, we have here. And uh, that's all uh, for today. And uh, thanks uh, for watching.
sorry, sorry to jump in here, um, but I'm I'm kind of curious because I know that you you write code as well, right? So you write SPFX and you're familiar with the development uh, techniques. You said yeah. that you would not actually use this in production. Um, can you can you kind of evaluate a bit on what would you use and why? This is magical and you know, pushing the limits, uh, but it, it's is it low code? Not really. It's JSON. It's complex. Um, well, it's uh, well. Uh, these are uh, how many? Uh, One thousand three. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's wow. a, a bit complex, uh, but uh, um, you know. Uh, I think that uh, even though it's uh, very long as a code, but it's pretty redundant because uh, all the sections do basically the same things. Uh, so you can uh, think uh, about this solution as uh, uh, several sections uh, um, repeated uh, many times. So uh, if you want to reproduce this uh, template, uh, you can add uh, even more section. I took uh, inspiration from Microsoft Dev about project skill uh, and the expertise, but uh, uh, obviously uh, you can um, change every everything uh, of uh, this code. For example, it's possible also to change uh, these titles here. There is a specific uh, way, uh, fully documented, uh, to change the column names uh, and have uh, an up, uh, an update here. So um, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Federico, the, the next question is, so this is list formatting and this is JSON. Would yeah. you recommend in production, I'm not sure how much experience you have on this, use this or SharePoint framework or Power uh, Apps or what, what would be kind of your experience on, on these kind of things? Is this something what you would do for your customer using list formatting? Well, I would suggest that normally well, when it comes to Microsoft List, I would suggest to start a, a path of digital transformation, maybe trying this option because the this Microsoft List is included in Microsoft 365 subscription. So uh, this could be a solution that could help you uh, understand what your needs are and therefore you can keep using uh, this uh, Microsoft List solution, or maybe you can uh, know better what you need, what you what you need more, and therefore you can also choose uh, other third part, um, party apps uh, application or paid application, obviously. But uh, this is uh, uh, a way to avoid, uh, for example, uh, storing uh, a lot of uh, PDFs uh, or uh, uh, docs uh, document. Uh, uh, in our organization and providing you with a, a sort of digital paper that can uh, help you store information through fully documented uh, features and uh, with a free application and, and so on. So it's just an option. Uh, it, can, it can be uh, obviously used um, also in production environment, um, a bit of further setup is needed, obviously. But uh, I think that uh, it's an option to help you um, choose better with the more awareness of what you need and what uh, you don't need. Just that. Yeah. Excellent. I, Thank I think you. the exciting part of this is there's a wide spectrum, right? It's like yes. you could implement this in Power Apps, you could implement this in SPFX, or you could implement it in list formatting, or you could start in list formatting and then uh, perhaps mature to more complex things that grow outside of list formatting. So great, great example. Uh, Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, implementation. Really great job. So, I mean, it's beautiful. it's like holy cow, right? <laughs> we, need, we need the sound effects for that. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, very good. And and I mean, w while we're looking at that, to Vess's point, and and uh, Federico, it got to over a thousand lines of JSON. That is also broken out, I'm sure. Um, but don't feel like that's unwieldy. I put links in the chat around tools from Sergey that you could use SP Formatter in VS Code in a, in a uh, web extension uh, for your browser. So there's a lot of things that can assist you uh, with being able to control all of the, maybe what might feel like unwieldiness of uh, JSON within list formatting. So don't feel like it's uh, it's gotta be that complex. It is absolutely low code uh, opportunities there and to start learning with. So take advantage of those and reach out if you have any questions. Uh, we have a, an entire uh, repo dedicated to list formatting samples. 
and everybody likes to assist with those. And there's some amazing things there. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions. All right. Well, thank you to all of uh, our attendees today, both of our presenters, Ramana Federico. Great, great job. Um, if you are wanting to discuss more with them about this and or you're watching this on demand through YouTube, we got you covered. We are starting the Community Calls Conversations. Uh, these are dedicated spaces with our operators standing by. <laughs> our presenters are going to be having dedicated threads to each of their demos where you can go and ask questions, continue the conversation if you'd like to collaborate with them or others that are interested uh, and passionate about the samples that we saw. So where can you get to those? Right here. You can use these QR codes uh, or the aka.ms along for each demo put the links and information in the chat. These will take you to the uh, Power Platform Power Users forums where you can continue that conversation. It is free to uh, set up an account if you do not already have one. Uh, don't worry about that. You can set up an account and or just uh, kind of look and see what everybody else is discussing. Uh, so it's our way of being able to continue that conversation and give everyone in the community a opportunity to continue to collaborate and keep that conversation going. Uh, and we're going to start integrating this into all the other calls as well. So keep an eye on that. Well, you may be wondering, I want to just curl up on the couch and start up my movie projector uh, and watch this recording again because it was so awesome, right? Uh, well, you won't be able to do that right away. But within 24 hours, you absolutely will be able to on the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel. You can access that by going to ak.ms slash community slash videos. If it says the video is ready for you to download through Teams, unless you're on Microsoft, you won't be able to. Don't try. It'll just end in uh you know, unhappiness, but you can subscribe to our YouTube accounts and that will let you know as soon as they are available, uh, almost always within 24 hours. You can also follow us for updates on Twitter at M365PNP uh, or see updates on LinkedIn, aka.ms slash community slash LI. The next M365 Power Platform bi-weekly call, two weeks from today, March 2nd, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Next week, of course, is our Viva Connections SharePoint Framework call, February 23rd at 7 a.m. as well. You can access all the community calls that we've talked about, and you should, aka.ms slash community slash calls to get them on your calendar. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. Your conversation, collaboration, and demos are what makes this the best community out there. Thank you. Have a great rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.